it rather worries me, I must say, that um, it's a national disgrace that our armed forces, as of today, are not ready and able to take on a peer-to-peer -peer opponent. Um, the Chief of Defence Staff stated quite clearly that the, the armoured division that we promised to NATO as a result of the NATO conference would not be ready for operations and have its full stockpiles and people and the rest of it until the 2030, 10 years away. Now, 10 years away is not good enough. If we don't uh, show Putin that we're up for something now, that's more likely to lead to war. Wars tend to start in August as well, and yet, uh, and, and great international crises. And here we are without effectively any real government. I mean, that's very worrying. And yet none of them, I mean, Tom Tugendhal has mentioned, I think he would spend money on defence, that's good. But they need to be spending money now, and I'm amazed that all of them haven't focused on this. You know, a, a major war in Europe, the whole Ukraine thing, is pretty, pretty important. And yet it hasn't really featured. I mean, we've, you know, we've been talking about uh, wokeness and things like that. But my goodness me, that, that pales into insignificance compared with the possibility, closer than it's been for decades, of there being a world war. A major war in Europe, as you say, a, a genuine prospect thereof. Um, and I wonder whether you feel, whatever you feel about Boris Johnson, uh, that, you know, there is that consensus that he, that he led from the front and maybe even led America into a tougher line on Ukraine than it might otherwise have taken. Is there a danger that with him gone or on the way out, that there is a vacuum in Western leadership on Ukraine? Um, I, I think it's unlikely, having seen the results of the NATO summit, and there's no doubt that um, you know, Boris Johnson did push the Ukraine thing well. He, did well, he did well there, and indeed, you know, he's got lots of strengths, but my goodness me, he's got huge weaknesses as well, and that's what's done for him, effectively. Um, but I think with the outcome of the NATO summit, um, I think that enough nations have realised how important this issue is. But when you look at some of the other European countries, you know, they're, they're talking big in terms of what they're going to do, um, the speed with which they're spending is not going to match that. Now, we should be setting an example. I, I think Penny Mordaunt understands defence to an extent. I, I know Penny. I must say she never talked about men, women, and who's women, and, who, and all this sort of thing with me ever, I have to say. Um, well, go on. I mean, I mean Lord uh, West, I no give, give us, I give us no an insight. Because, in. I mean, it, it's, it's enraging many of our viewers and listeners. And I, and I think you're probably right. They like the, the Brexity cut of her jib. They're, they're puzzled by, by the woke stuff. Well, as I say, and certainly when I've talked to another, I've never, we've never, it doesn't even cross my bows to talk about it. We've never talked about those things. It's been other issues. And as I say, she is, you know, I do think she understands the military a bit better. I mean, I'm afraid Rishi Sunak, I don't think he understands defence. Um, and I think Boris, more strength of his arm, had to twist his arm to get that, that uh, money in the settlement uh, two years ago which was very useful, but didn't make up for the one-third reduction in our military capability caused by the coalition in 2010, thanks to the Lib Dems, effectively.